to draw a little deer today but I never wound up doing that hi doodle fort the fort of doodles the least watched stream I ever do but also one of my favorite streams to do so you know it's fine One second. I want to. I want to see something. How are you guys? While I do this, I'm. I'm curious. Um, how something happened. One second. Hunting monsters is monster hunter stories. Okay. How's it doing? I'm watching a person slowly have something fall on them, don't mind me. It's fine. Anyway, I was just curious. Um, hi! We did um, food this last month. Oh god, I'll keep that in mind if I ever play it then. We did food this month. Um, and I don't remember what we did last month, but we did food, which has led me to Google quite a few fucking, um, recipes, frustratingly enough, just because while looking up food for reference to show you guys for things, um, I got very hungry, which is not great, but... Here we are. Armor was last month, right? I'm very tired. This is my first day off from not going to the gym since Monday. <laughs> so there's that. Um, it's been a lot, but I'm getting it done. And I guess that's what matters. Uh, before we jump into it, I'm gonna do something. Okay. Vibe check. My vibe's all right. It's been one week since you looked at me. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I need to just pause this real quick. I need to go down to this. We're gonna, we're gonna, you're looking at this. You're looking at this. Here's what's going to happen. We're going to... Hold on. Hold on, I have to remember how to... Hold on. There we go. This is what we're doing. Okay? This is what's happening. Okay? Gonna make it... Hold on. Gonna make it... Uh, uh, live on stream. Making choices live on stream. Oh boy. There we go. That's what we wanted everything we wanted mm -hmm. and now we're good and now we're 
good. That's going to be from now on, hopefully, by the way. I would like to wake up and get some food in me. Um, as well as, like, I just have things I need to wind up doing in the mornings before stream. So, I need a little bit extra time. Um, it's not that much more, but it's a little bit more. So, hopefully that helps. Oh, man, I would love some Dunkin'. Uh... Listen, sometimes you just got to be not goo. So the question is, is when you draw food, who, I'm curious, who had trouble? Who had the bunch of trouble drawing food? Because if you remember, the prompt was to render it, I believe, uh as close to realistic as you can in your style. So, who had trouble? Because there are a few of you who, if I'm going to be honest, styles did not lend towards more realistic rendering. So. I mean, yeah, that's the idea, is that you're trying. That's the main point here, right? Um, so, in the main process of food, there's, from what I've found, a couple things to keep in mind. No, that's fair, Sabs. Evie, I love you. Not today. I will... Spend the usual eight hours I do petting you tonight, but as of right now, I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm sorry. Um, so, why does... <laughs> why does food have a hard time being drawn? is my question and the answer to that is okay one sec the answer to that is well first and foremost most people don't use reference so that's probably one of the biggest contenders is that people don't use reference um texture is another one if you make something extremely shiny that usually dictates that it's wet or sticky and in most cases, if you do that to any food, that's not really how it works. Okay. So, there's that. Um, as well as lighting. Lighting is the other big one. And lighting is one of those things that I will sit here and I will talk about it time and time and time and time and time again but it still seems like it's hard to get into people's brains including y'all it yes you wanted wet eggs and that's okay i didn't say wet with water i meant wet with oil it's fine we'll get to that so then if you're going to sit there and go okay well how is it that someone can draw a piece of bacon right has absolutely here like food clip art bacon we'll just go with this how is it that we look at like this and we go yeah that's crispy when it has no lighting no shading no real rendering of any kind and how would we know if it's crispy or not? Technically, you don't. You don't know if it is. Your mental library goes, okay, what is that? It's bacon. Bacon means... Well, I've made bacon this color and it's been not crispy. I've had non-crispy bacon like this. Um, your mental library goes in and goes, okay, well, your bacon... Normally, it's pretty crispy when you eat it like this, so 
this one also must be crispy, right? You're basically going into your brain and pulling out like what bacon is and being like, all right, it has these traits, which means that this bacon that I'm looking at here, even if it is clip art, is crispy, right? So then you just have to make sure from there that the idea keeps coming across, right? And in that case, you may say want to... Fuck it, let's just jump into this real quick. Okay, cool. I love pulling out my tablet. That's great. Cool. Awesome. I, why does this keep happening? Great. Cool. My fucking favorite. Hold on. I'm gonna make sure this doesn't fucking happen again. Ugh. One second. It's cause... <sighs> Under there. Stay on the goddamn table. One sec. Okay, so if you were to make uh, this look more crispy, let's say, right, then I would actually say your best places to start would be your line art, actually. Because taking a note from one of my favorite artists, usually sharper lines and edges tend to indicate something is maybe more crisp, or otherwise so and I will probably talk about this artist quite a bit in the next coming uh, minutes minutes okay god damn it go to the right monitor P tablet pen Please don't be a pain in my ass today. Okay, so let's say we wanted to make this crispier. First and foremost, it's fried in oil, right? I'll just. I'm literally only going to do like one tiny corner. Do, 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 do. And the edges aren't just line art. So when I say hard edges, I don't just mean the line art as well. I do mean everything. I mean your shading, your shadows, your lighting. There's nothing wrong with hard edges and being afraid of not having something blended can wind up really hurting you in the end legitimately being more comfortable with being able to be like okay well i know that like this doesn't need to have like this blended out it can just kind of hang out and be in its own thing sort of thing and just one of them things actually hold on one second come from twitch uh uh fuck twitch extension I've been meaning to get this and I don't know why um Okay. There's that. 
I've been meaning to put closed captions on my streams. Go to extensions on the side panel, click my extensions, go to closed captions, go to activate, as what panel Evie you need to fuck off thank you this can also fuck off um log into website log in to the channel owner this is so helpful. Man. English to... Yeah. Hit the start button to start recording audio through your microphone. Okay. Start. Allow. Sure. So then at that point, it should be giving closed captions? Maybe, we'll see. Maybe. Potentially. Probably not. But you never know. It could be. Doesn't seem to be. I'll figure that out later. I've been meaning to put closed captions. My stream is what I'm getting at. Anywhere. Anyway. So. Back to this and my ADD ass not remembering the last thing I was saying, which is fantastic. Yeah, I was thinking about it. I'll figure it out mostly. Okay, so again, with lighting, I don't even, wouldn't even really pick these colors, but for lighting, what I'm getting at here is that you need to keep in mind that there's a light source right here, so it needs to continue down the line. If there's a little bump here, starting here, it's like this. If there's a light source here, you need to continue it down the whole thing because otherwise the light source is only hitting this singular spot. Sharp lines, gotcha. And not being afraid of like having these harder sort of lines as a full stop is important because at some point you're gonna have to come into a situation where like even if you're going from a photo of something you're going to need to give it like a hard edge and if you're still too afraid to do that then it's just gonna look like shit in the end no offense but it is right and it just it's very much so being willing to go in and basically fuck up your art by your standards in most cases to try and get it to be where you want it to be What is this brush? This is this brush. Does that make sense? Yes, learning the difference between hard edges and blending is super important. So, I want to talk about one of my favorite artists, who I'll probably be referencing quite a bit. Um, so, well then don't make them, it's your choice to have them be everywhere. Your entire light source is based upon like what you want it to be, right? So first and foremost, every single drawing this artist does, they take a photo of the food first. We're going to put it that way right 
That's a completely different artist. This is also a completely different artist. So they take a photo, photo of the food first and they render out everything else you need, which is why I wanted to know how many of you actually wound up using references, right? So this is gyoza, right? If you took just here, if you took just this part, okay? If you only looked at that, would you say that's giving you the vibe of it being like crispy? No, fuck no, in fact. It's just some colors. But the fact that you know that it's a piece of gyoza brings it home, basically. And then you wind up having like the sharp edges like right here, as well as right in here. You also have a sharp edge here, as well as it having like those very obvious lines. So, you get the gist of what I'm coming after. My brain is all over the place today, so I'm very sorry. And then like with this, the only reason that you think that those fries might not be crispy is because of memory, but the other reason being is that they're like not straight lines, right? Like, yeah, fries don't fry completely in straight lines, but when there's full like bins in them sort of thing, it, it very much leads to, you know, it being in your brain as like a not crispy fry. And then you just have to go from there. I actually want this specifically. Okay. So, and then you go, okay, dear, well, I don't do uh, digital art. And I'm like, all right, then don't do a digital. And have your fucking straight crisp lines still there, as well as your texture and your light sources all being the same. Wow. This has like three light sources. It's fine. The point that I'm getting at is that there's a chosen light source. It is a tempting one light source. And that if you wind up like not being able to have those sharp edges, you wind up with just kind of a mush. And no offense to this artist, this artist does fantastic work, right? Like the amount of color and the fact that I know what these things are without like line art is great, but then without like sharp edges, it just kind of winds up being nothing sort of thing, right? So keeping that all in mind, who wants to go first? There we go. Okay, well, Mimic, you're kind of easy to you do. So, um, first and foremost, good fucking job, <laughs> Mimic. Um, yeah, no, good fucking job. Did you have a photo reference that I could yoink from you? May I have, please? So, I actually originally showed Max this and was like, it makes me really proud of my students to be improving as much as they were. And this is the example that I showed him. I just want to say that first and foremost before I rip this to pieces. And also go to the bathroom real quick while I wait for that reference.
Where did you wind up putting it? Oh, there it is. Okay. So, one thing that I want to point out is you were given a light environment already. Okay. And because the light environment had a white background, you got scared and didn't understand what to do because I've told you to color things on gray. So the photo itself, since this is a photo, has its own light environment, which if you're using it as a reference, just go ahead, copy it. Just copy it. It's fine. You can, I say that because there's a lot of areas where there's a lot of like high reflection that you did try to copy over here, but it wound up falling flat just because you're on a darker background. That's one of the few situations where I would be like, no, just, just use white because this is literally a photo and you can see that it's on a table or something and it has the shadow here which you also could have added. So, okay. So now that we add that, does it fit a little bit better? Mm, kind of. And that's just because the lighting on these is not the exact same. So let's go ahead and just grab this. And you can tell that there's little dents in them because if you notice, there's a highlight here and a highlight here but there's not one in the middle, which means that there's a hole there, right? So let's just take this grape, for example, which I assume is this one. So all I'm doing is going in and just seeing what I'm seeing, color dropping where I need to, because again, we are digital artists. Yeah, you might not need later in life the color dropper, that's fine. You are learning, use your fucking color dropper. It's a tool given to you, use it. There's also a little bit more shadow here than there was on this grape itself. So I'm gonna add that back in just a little bit. Then there was the hole that we have that's like right there. And it's not like an obvious hole, but it is there, okay? So you can kind of see how I've been using mostly soft edges so far, right? And we're going to go in and we're going to be like, there's some lighting thing on my tablet. Hold on. There we go. There's some lighting here and here. And I'm just trying to be a little bit subtle with the first colors that I'm laying down. And then we have an obvious white light. So let's just go ahead and just. So I'm not bringing the shine all the way down, right? And that's important. That's actually very important to keep in mind. You can also tell that there's a little bit of rim lighting because there's some bounce light going on. And then I'm going to go in and I'm just going to clean this up a little bit more comparatively to the other ones. Just because there would also be some bounce light from it to other grapes as well. And then I need Okay. 
does that make sense? For the most part. There's one other thing that we need to add to it. So grapes are somewhat translucent, right? So depending on the light source, you need to be able to show its insides somewhat. So you can kind of tell that there's a little bit more saturation here than on the other side. So I'm just gonna drop a color a little bit. And then just go back over it until I have a color I sort of like. Make sure that I'm not messing up the rest of my stuff that I did a second ago. And I'm actually not 100% why you wound up doing line art for these, but then wound up not doing them for the grapes, which is kind of interesting. And I know that there are some styles that show off like specific line art, but there's nothing wrong with just being like, hey, look, like a little bit of line art. Like, yeah, I did say realistically, but like, it's within your own style. If you're normally used to line art, do line art. Right? And then if you were like, adventurous enough, basically, I would say that I would put, make sure that these, like all the grapes underneath it, don't have line art in that sense, because you're just trying to make the ones on top stand out so that it's very obvious what the shape is. Just something to that effect. You can be choosy with your liner. You don't have to have no lines or all lines. You can be somewhere in the middle. It's fine. Like, you can, if you are so inclined, just put line art on, like, the stick. Me, personally, it just depends on what I'm drawing. This is just one of those things that I wind up doing for... Um, for when I draw food, at least. I wind up just going in and rendering everything out with like a soft amount of line art around it. And some parts don't have line art, some parts do. You know, it just, whatever visually works better. So like over here, right? You kind of have this soft line between the apple and the orange. So well, first and foremost, I would go in and I would just maybe clean up this a little bit first and just make sure that line is as good as we want it to be in the first place, right? And that if that still doesn't work, I would go back in and be like, all right, well, it's still not visually able enough to, like, makes sense so i'm just gonna go in with like a really thin line art brush and be like yep there you go and now because there's that thin black line there it doesn't make much of a difference but it's visually enough for your brain to be like all right those are two different things as well as you kind of miss the mark on reflecting a little bit of that green that you can see a lot here and here into this, I think, you wound up with just sort of a muddy brown color instead of it being the green that we needed it to be. But that's fine. Because it's an easy thing to just kind of explain. So I'm on another layer, all right? So literally all I'm going to do is just because it's a reflection right very light doesn't need to be a whole lot doesn't need to be a whole lot at all i mean 
mean, that's leaning more into like painting and things like that, but you're getting the idea, right? That you need the light sources to work to make this seem like it's actually shiny. Where you need to be able to go in with your, where did my reference go? With your reference and be like, okay, well, there's this spot of light here that you kind of tried to just make into a large bunch of lines that doesn't really work. <laughs> you can do it all in one layer if you want. That doesn't matter. That's not the part that matters. So the lightest color is up here. Okay. And we're still not white, right? We're still not trying to do white. And then I would say, eh, bring that up some, and then, yep, still not white. It's one of those things where you can do it if it helps you, but if it's just hindering you, you have to realize when that's happening. Yeah, it does. This is kind of what I mean when I say you need to know where to use your hard edges and your soft edges, right? Because as of right now, I've used nothing but soft edges for the time being. And yeah, it looks a bit like a tomato, I'm going to be real. But... We need to take darker purple or orange sorry and just here's what we're gonna do Okay. We're going to use the tools that Clip Studio has given us. Wowee. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Wowee. Wow, wow. Wowee, wow. Okay. okay, so one thing about texturing dots, right? You have to keep in mind that they're not all the same color. Why would they be all the same color? They're getting hit by the light differently, right? So why would they be the same color? Okay, and then we're going to do this just a little bit. And then we can just go in and clean up a little bit more. I 
sec. Let me try to do something in a different way. Back up, back up, back up. And then I want to point out that this has become a little bit too red for my liking, actually. So what I will do is even though on the reference, like we may have been color dropping left and right, right? That's fine. The point is that you're trying to make sure that this reads as an orange, right? That's the whole point. That's the entire point is that it's supposed to look like an orange. So just like the difference between that and that can be a lot. Weirdly, it can be a lot. And if you're never confident in like your own contrast, that's fine. You can up your contrast and stuff and bring down your brightness until you're comfortable with the thing. Like it's okay. You are allowed to do those things. If, if anyone tells you that you're not allowed to use your fucking tools, and like they can go fuck themselves. Welcome back, Lime. So, any questions from that point? I would be careful of the colors you use on a banana next time as well. It looks like you shaded with green, but it seems to come off like gray. And so in order to combat that, I would say go into a deeper blue before anything next time. It might make it a little bit more gray, but you can all, or it might make it a little bit more green colored than you need, but you can always add more yellow. Not a big deal. I'm just fucking coloring fruit at this point. I don't know. The top banana looks off, but it doesn't know exactly why. The one that I've been working with or the one that is right next to it? Two. Hold on. Two, one. <laughs> Which banana? Please point to the banana that emotionally scarred you. Okay. It might just be that, like, I was, like I said, that the shadows come off um, very gray more than anything, as well as bananas, actually, if you didn't know this. Uh, there's a reason why you can peel them the way you do. It's because they're not perfect circles. They're not perfectly round, and so we need harder lines to dictate, you know, that they have those little lines in them, and that's okay. Yeah. I actually think that might have gone too far. Worry about your detail last. That's a big one, I think, that a lot of people get caught up on. A lot of people think that the detail is what matters, and you. And this is true for not just food, right? Um, people are like, oh, but what? Am I not supposed to draw in like these little tiny dots that are all? you know, across the orange. Yeah, you are, but not at first, because if the under, if the part underneath the orange dots or holes, whatever, indents, freckles. Uh, is there a word for them? Pits? Whatever the case. 
if the if the orange is not good underneath all of those dots, then it's not gonna work out, period. Pores? Maybe. Why would I believe that that orange is real just because it has a whole bunch of dots on it when the reality is that it just doesn't look good in the light environment? Right? I mean, that's one of those things where I would just say, get a fucking texture brush, don't do it yourself, you know? Unless you're, like, zooming in on a goddamn strawberry, in which case, like, you have to draw the strawberry and be like, this is where the light source is, and yeah. And then you go in and you draw every single fucking little tiny seed on a strawberry, and it has every little thing highlighted and so on and so forth. But we're not doing that, you know? We're drawing some fruit, but we're not that obsessive yet. Yet. Keyword there being yet. Yes, they are. Okay, so, any questions? The other big thing I want to just mention is y'all can just take pictures of your food and trace it. It's a thing you can just do. You can just do that. Do you know why? Because you're the one that took the fucking photo. You can just do that. It's just a thing that you can just do. And it's fine. I mean, you didn't have to, to be fair, that's fine. You didn't have to do fruit. You could have just gone to McDonald's and taken a photo of your burger and then done it that way. Or any food you had at any point. You could have taken a glass of water for all I would have given a shit. You know? Kick it, that's true, but that doesn't teach you light environments, to be fair. Okay. I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick again, and I'll be right back. Okay, any other questions? And also, I guess JoJo's going next. Ah, <sighs> oh, fine. <clears throat> there we go. Let me close this. Assuming yours is the flan. Yes, okay. So, 
what are the problems we see in the first one? We're going to go with, uh, let's work on these two specifically. The top one here, let me just number them. It's just fucking easier if I just number them. So this is flan one and this is flan two. What are the problems we see with flan one comparatively to its reference? The flan with the plane. Lighting? Yeah, that's it's part of the lighting. Uh, so so it is the lighting. Um it is far shinier than the one on the right. Yes. So the main things that when I look at this, I kind of notice is I kind of understand that this is a seam, so it's catching a little bit of light, but that's not all that important. I notice the light here and here and not so much over here, which means our light source is coming in this way. OK, so I'm going to say, OK, there's a little bit of reflective light from probably the plate or otherwise, but this is our main light source. So why in turn do we wind up having a very large line basically right about here instead of the like thinner one that we wound up needing? As well as if you notice when I color drop this, this seems to be a little bit more saturated than the colors you picked simply just because they were a little bit more yellow and that's it it's the only difference so there's soft shading on this side right we learned that from looking into this and being like there's a soft light source over here Now, if you notice, I added more yellow and that's just because how our eye views the thing and what the actual color of the thing is, is very different. Okay. And that's one of those things where you need to be able to understand that even though you're putting down this color, that might not be the color it actually is. Okay. So now we have all this nice soft shading over here. let's go ahead and go okay well this is our lighter color and we have those nice oranges again we could just bring that in remembering that our light source is in here primarily so I'm just gonna go ahead and just do that And now we have that like harder sort of line of where it actually is. And so this seems to be about the same color as this, right? That would be because it's a different angle than the previous one. The, um, this is more of a flat angle than this is when talking about it in a 3D environment. So, okay, so we're going to take that orange again. We just come in a little bit.
And then there's a little bit of browning from either the caramel or otherwise. Okay. So now we have a more sort of solid piece overall and it's not nearly as shiny as the other one was. It's still a little bit shiny. And in that case, we can just tone down the shading side just a little bit. And that's fine. But you still get the concept that there's a light source here comparatively to just having a large gloop of light there. That makes sense? Again, this is one of those things where you would probably render and render and render and food is hard, right? Like, there's a damn reason why I gave you this fucking prompt. No? It's one of those things that you can actually wind up spending hours on. So your angle was a little bit off, but that's not a big deal. Um, so from here to here, there's a gradient. There's a, a change, right? It's more saturated here than it is here. This is just an airbrush. This is literally just a soft airbrush. That's all it is, is a soft airbrush at low opacity. So this, having that like more towards white and gray color is because of the plate itself or the backdrop. So we need to keep that in mind. And you can literally just use the exact color for the backdrop. If you so please. And this is one of the few times that we're going to go ahead and blend that in. Okay. And then we have this very hard line here with a lighter color inside. The big part of that is the fact that there's a lighter color inside. Come on, stupid window. Fuck you, getting all on my eyes and shit. Clip Studio? It is not. It does go on sale constantly, though. So there is that. So there's this very big area of a shadow right in here, right? But then if you notice, it's a different color inside of it. So we're just going to go back over it. And there you go. And then of course, we're going to add in the tiny little shade of white-ish here, because again, it was reflective. We found out the lighting situation from how reflective it was. I'm still not using white right away. that makes sense how we got from where we were to where we are okay so keeping that in mind what are the is what's the issue with this one well here first and foremost let me just Do that first. No opinion. I think it's 
fucking dumb that Epic Games wants to own ArtStation, but whatever. <laughs> Well, yeah. So the light source is not from above, actually. The light source is behind it. Imagine a window behind it that's casting light towards us and just catching, like, if... Here. So this is the window, right? And the flan is, like, here. And light is casting this way. So we've lost a lot of the shadow that's right here as well, if you notice. If you really need a program to use that's free, I can recommend maybe just um, finding a, a hate there's GIMP, GIMP's an option, but there's also Paint Tool Sci, which you can find a lot of torrents of, but please, if you can, pay for it. It's one dude and, and stuff like that. It It's nothing to, to torrent, really. It's not worth torrenting. It, it It's so worth paying for. Sci 2 was com was almost not coming out just because people torrented Psy way too much. Yeah, but it's one of those things like in desperation, yeah, I understand torrenting it, it as much as I don't like telling people not to. Anyway, what shadow? Because there's only like couple shadows I see and if you're talking about this one and then in that case that would be a secondary light source which is why this site is lit up okay yeah that would be why so we have a light source coming this way and a light source coming this way um, that's what a lot of food blogs will wind up doing. This light source is not your main light source. It is just a point light source. It is us literally just pointing a light at this and going, this is adding light to the situation. The situation being what's the light that is already there based upon the environment around you, meaning the window and the light that is coming out of it. So it'd be the same general gist, you know, I would even just kind of copy over my colors and just really roughly, you know, this sort of thing. And just like render out from there and try to make sure that the shadow still gets added in as well and then as well as like the light sources that were right here that were missed if you notice there's a couple of them where it's just reflecting off of I don't even know if that's pure white it is not so let's back up So, it's just things to keep in mind. Well, that's... Okay. So, no. A light source is a, a source of light. But there's different kinds of light sources. Cartoons think of that a lot, actually. Um, there's different kinds of light sources. There are point light sources, where it's like a flashlight. Where, like, you've turned a flashlight on... And the flashlight doesn't put light behind it or anything, right? Like, 
if we were to aim a flashlight at this, the shadow would be cast here, right? And it would be a very specific shade of, sh of a shadow, right? Because you're holding it at a set distance, meaning the, the gradient of, not the gradient, the value of that shadow is going to be the same no matter what, okay? In a perfect world. So a light environment basically means if there's a window over here, depending on the time of day, depending on what's in the air, depending on where you're situated in the room, the shadow itself will be of a certain gradient, but that could change based upon like a million and two things, right? Dust in the air creates a different light environment. Reflective surfaces creates a different light environment. Stuff like that. So, in the case of this, this is a controlled light environment because this isn't a light box. The only light that's coming from this is the light box. So you're treating that as your main source of light. Okay? that make sense? Also, any questions for plan and otherwise? Yeah, it is. Uh, because if you're wanting to draw and you're wanting to improve, that's one of the main places to start is light environments, even in cartoons and clip uh, not clip, um, animation, there's still light environments you have to think of. So, even in, fuck it, let's go with, you don't even have to do it to make it realistic at all. This is the first thing that comes to fucking mind. Figuring out the light environments for all of these and like how that there's like a soft pink like sort of feeling to everything because of where their lights are and stuff like that. Where all of the shadows are on their faces is dependent 100% on what the light source is in the room. Cartoons think about this. Cell shading thinks about this. Every fucking drawing that is shaded or rendered thinks about this. And it's something you need to start practicing and thinking about light, light source wise if you want to improve, right? Like it sucks. It's really fucking hard. I still have trouble with it. Yeah, computers still have fucking trouble learning and, and simulating light. But it's one of those things that you gotta do if you want to improve. These aren't even masterpieces. <laughs> Joe, I, I understand the frustration, but you have to be able to push through it and want to get better. Your desire to get better needs to overpower everything else. I mean, okay, for example, let's just real quick. You picked a light environment for this. You didn't think about it, but you did. And it wasn't hard. And once you got like more used to the steps in it, you understood how to light that apple later, probably in life. And this cherry has the exact same light source. <coughs> you did it. You've already done it. You've already done half the fucking fight. And the the other half of the fight, which everybody still has to learn, is like reflective light and stuff like that and atmospheric distortion shit. But that's if you want to learn that, like right now. That shouldn't come until you have a better grasp of, of just learning how to light a ball in the first place. If you don't know how to shade a ball from different angles, that's where you need to start. And then you go from there and you go, okay, 
well, this ball was this colored, meaning that it reflects that color onto different things around it. And you go from there and you just keep adding on to it. And it's just things you learn. And once you learn it, you're never going to fucking forget it. Does that make sense? One second. I mean, yeah, it's one of those things that you got to think about no matter what you're winding up doing, right? If you want to get better, it's just one of those things you got to do. It sucks. I hate lighting, right? I hate lighting with a fucking passion, but I'm still trying. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the thing, though, is you learn all of these things together. You're, you're going to learn lighting. You're going to learn color theory. You're going to learn character design you wind up learning all those things together because they all go hand in hand you can't learn one without learning another in most cases okay who would like to go next well you need to learn by doing correctly You can't just continuously draw and expect yourself to learn everything correctly. You need someone to explain how to ride the bicycle before you actually learn to ride a bicycle. Usually that's either self-taught and in, in the sense of like... Okay, wait a minute. That's either self-taught in the sense of... You... Do you have references I could take from you, women? Um, you're either self-taught in the sense that you look up the things and you go and you find it out, or you get a book, or you could be taught by someone light environment and actually have gone to college for it. It just depends. Thank you, women. Like, I don't think I would have gotten where I am in my portfolio without at least some practice in some cases, right? Like, I I would have never improved had I not tried to, like, learn the things I didn't want to learn. I'm not trying to be harsh. I'm not trying to, like, come after you. This is just something that I'm going to tell to everyone. This is... The same thing that everyone needs to know. We all need to learn these things. We all need to practice these things, even if we don't want to, just because, thank you women, uh, just because, you know, oh, we have another chef lit food. Lovely. Um, thank you. Hell, fuck, half of Doodle Fort is shit people don't want to do, but they do it anyway, and they vote for the options anyway. Because, you know, they need, they know they need to improve them. Okay, so, first things first, that kind of bugs me. Um, oh, you gave up. I didn't see the give up. Okay, we're going to ignore the, this. We're just going to ignore this because you wound up giving up on it. Okay, so, first things first, I want to look at, let's say, this one. The pepper was an afterthought, which is fine. It looks like pepper. You're fine. Um, you did wind up having it become a little bit more watery around this edge, if you notice. Whereas this seems to be a little bit more goop. 
which is a hilarious way to put that. Let me just put that way up. Um, so let's make it more goop, right? How do we make more goop? Go back to this. Okay, so going in and we're just making this look more like this. Basically, you did forget this shine, which is fine in hindsight, but it does help define the entire, that's a little bit too long, entire shape a little bit more, especially since we have this shadow right about here with one hard edge, one soft edge. Okay, so now you have that very obvious sort of edge to it, which like I said, food is 100% the hard edge and the soft edge, and you have to have both of them. Okay, so this, if you notice, just by looking at it, you can tell that this area is a little bit darker and there's a little bit lighter here and here. So we go over here, that's just the brush, the not the brush, that's just the, the occlusion. I actually have an occlusion brush that does specifically that, which is like so fucking helpful. <laughs> Everything you make is subparty you and only you. Everything you make is only subpar to you. And at the end of the day, you have to realize that you are not making art in most cases for yourself. You are making it to put out onto the internet and get those happy little hearts. And the reality is that more artists should not do that, but that's what we do. We, at the end of the day, unless like you have the 100% ability to be like, Nah, I just don't feel like it sort of thing. I just want to draw this for myself. Yeah, that's fine. But you're still at the end of the day getting those little serotonin boosts when someone likes your post. Okay, so. I'm going to remake this shape that we have here. Hi, Zanry. Um, I'm going to remove this little gradient you wound up having. If you notice, you wound up with a gradient there just because you wound up trying to make the egg a little bit more runny through here. When the truth of the matter is that this, this aren't needed. They were just little bits you wanted to add on because you thought they might look better when the reality of it is that they did not. Okay. So now we have this edge here as well as this one here. And then there's a little bit more up here. Oop. And I'm just color dropping the entire way right as I go. Um, I will mention that this seems a lot more saturated than this is. So I'm just going to go in. I'm going to take this color. Where's my brush? I would like my brush, please. And I literally am just doing a color layer on top of this, and I'm just getting the basic color down. And then I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna take this yellow because down here is obviously more yellow. 
Nope, it is just not wanting to play nice with yellow. Cool. That's my favorite. Okay. So we have that to that. And then I'm also, I'm just going to go over here. And just bring up saturation some. It's fine. Just because we can. Am I on the wrong layer? I might be on the wrong layer. No, I need contrast. That's what I'm needing. There we go. Oop. Like I said, you if you are uncomfortable with what you think contrast is or how dull your colors might be. Spoilers, I am. I hate my colors in most cases. I think they're too fucking dull. And in most cases, when I do human characters, I don't like how they turn out. So I bring up the fucking contrast because I can. Okay. So the reason this is more yellow than it is here, by the way, is because it's thinner here. It's showing the egg underneath it. And then back to having hard lines. And then again, we can always just, if we need it, you don't always need it. Add a little bit of definition to it and it's okay. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, your brain does think it's cheating. Your brain 100% thinks it's cheating, but it's fine. Again, I'm going to beat the fucking shit out of the person who was like, don't use contrast is bad for whatever fucking reason. Okay, any questions? Would you like your complimentary egg now or later? Okay, so again, the problem with this one, for me at least, is just straight up. This. That's so much more egg-like. That's so much more egg-like. Comparatively, at least. Just changing around your contrast is a big changer here. That's fair. And then of course we have like this light source, which I would add the light source back in a little bit stronger, maybe. And at this point, honestly, I'm just kind of freeballing it. So who cares?
Okay. Because you're thinking about a billion and two things, and it's hard to keep in mind all the things that you're learning. Wait, what's gatekeeping? Not all of the previous Doodle Forts, but a good amount of them. The ones of this year have been on the VOD channel, because I only made the VOD channel out of this year. I'm confused what gatekeeping... what, what we're gatekeeping. Oh, the banning of the contrast tool. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those things that people can easily learn to, like, what things should look like or get closer to what things should look like and practice. But then after you do that, you need to branch out and be like, okay, well, now I'm going to paint and get there anyway because this is how I need it to look. Right, and you stop relying on the contrast tool, but everyone's like, no, you should just skip the step of the fucking contrast tool. Yeah, it's kind of gatekeepy. A little bit. Anyway, so, any questions? Any questions why I did the above? By the way, which also, real quick, I want to change this. I only just kind of noticed that because there's no edge there. And this is such a hard shadow that it makes it appear like a little edge there, which is why a lot of people were saying it was a baby, I realized. And I want to just bring this orange out and around a little bit better. Instead of it being the edge that it was. Okay, so one other thing. Would you say that this right here is white? Specifically, this part right here. It's also the arm, yeah. Chat, would you say that that color is white? It's egg white. It's off white. It is not white. It's in fact like an orange color. You remember what I talked about when I said that you need to paint the colors that are there or the colors that you see instead of the colors you think you see or the colors that are there This was me color dropping from here, and I noticed pretty quickly, if you notice my little thing up here, that it's not white. It's not at all white. There's a little bit of yolk underneath there, and that's okay. No, I'm glad you didn't. You did fine. You did, you did fine. I was the one that wound up adding white into this. But the point that I'm making is that while this probably looked white or like a slight off white, the reality is that it was fucking orange. It was some color of fucking like yellow orange. And it's like a light color, but it's still not white. And it's keeping that in mind when you go back to draw and being like, okay, well, this part here is actually like blue. And then this part has a little bit of that red in it. And then these shadows are still a little bit blue over here. There's even a little bit of like browns and greens in this. It's just training yourself to be able to see those colors, basically. Yes, it is also a, a contrast effect. The whole like two boxes and you know you you drag one and wow they're the same color 
Okay, I'm gonna go to the bathroom real quick again, just because diuretics are a bitch. Figure out who wants to go next. I also like eggs. They're a main part of my diet, actually. <sighs> children running around. I hate children. No worries, Jojo. That sounds like a fantastic dinner. So who's going next? Hmm? Of types of eggs? No, I don't. Do you have a link to that? <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to pick whoever then. Um, let me go ahead and delete this. Okay. Hey, Sabs, are you here? I'll take that as a no. So... In the style of illustration, right? We need to figure out how to make this look. I don't want to say better because that's not the term I want to use. Um, but who the fuck's dither? That's right. Sounds like some loser to me. So you have to ask yourself, okay, what's the style we're going for? And that seems to be very flat illustration for the most part. Which, okay, that's fine. I understand what it is. Let's change it. And that sounds mean. I know. But it's how we work here. And I'm going to actually do something I should be doing more of, which is making two copies. Okay, so first and foremost, we obviously have a light source. It's coming in from this direction. Okay, so if the question is, is if we have that light source, why is it so you don't need a permit? No. Why is it so fucking bright? And I'm going to go ahead and just do some of this and be like, wow, it's almost like cell shading at a more basic level, not too difficult to try and figure out light sources with. Wowee, wow, 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 wow. Okay. Then we go in and we realize, huh, there's a drip of ice cream right here that has a shadow, right? Okay, this is some bullshit. Hold on. This is not the cooked egg tier list. Where the fuck is the egg tier list? God damn it. Is it this one? No. 
think it's this one. All right, I think it's this one. Okay. Egg sandwich. Good. Scrambled eggs. Boring. Fried egg. Excellent. Fantastic. Boiled eggs. Fantastic. Omelets. Suck it. Runny egg. They're fine. Hard egg. Hell yeah. Super runny egg. Fuck that. Uh, egg. Good. Um, it's just, it's egg. It's just, it's just egg. Scrambled eggs. Mm, also kind of boring. These are more boring than this. I don't know what the difference between these scrambled eggs and this one are. Runny boiled egg. Fuck yeah. More scrambled eggs. Whatever. Fried sunny side up egg. Hell yeah. The egg. I just don't like omelets. I've had good omelets. I've made myself good omelets. I just don't like omelets that much. They've always, to me, they're just like dry and not great. Runny egg goes on burger? Mm, sometimes. Sometimes. Not always. Sometimes. Anyway, back to back to this. So we need to notice that there's a drip right here. So, okay. Shade the drip then. Because again, we have our light source. We should probably pay attention to it. All right. This seems to be like a little inset of chocolate instead of an outside like piece of chocolate put on there. And if it's not, then I would advise maybe to make it that way because me makes more sense to be a little inset of chocolate, which means that this side is actually going to be the one that catches the light. Why is that? Well, my friends, that is because it is the only one facing the light. And now look, it looks like an actual hole. Hmm. Fun. Okay, so now we have an emptied out cone piece with, you know, like, a, uh, my brain is just firing on all fucking pistons today, I swear to God. So now we have an actual sort of, like, hole to the cone, that's fine. We also need to shade this part differently than the other part because again it is in fact hitting the being hit by light differently than the other. When we get done with dither cones, can you peel it? No. Okay, and then let's go ahead and say that there's a piece of ice cream here that's just big enough to cover the rest. And then like maybe some small pieces or whatever we want to like deal with sort of thing. You also have to remember that there are indents and things where you stick food. So if we were to do like this, and again, I'm only doing this with one fucking color, guys. Y'all can shade too. Y'all can shade too. It's not hard. You too can shade. It's okay. Not hard. It's very easy, in fact. Back to what I said about hard lines following soft lines. That sort of thing. And we have a very basic, like, this feels more shaded than this does, right? Because this was very basically shaded. This kind of feels like it actually might maybe exist somewhere in a light environment. Yeah, you don't need that, right? Whereas 
The other one, not so much. Not, not so much. Hi, Barry. Did you do your homework? How are you? I like how you resubscribed on a doodle fort where I don't believe I really have alerts. Thank you for uh, tier three for 36 whole fucking months. Why the fuck is it a tier three for one and two? Hi. We're talking about how light sources are extremely important, more important than you might think they are. Oh, yeah, we also shit on your egg tier list. With softer lighting? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't like omelets. I'm sorry. I'll eat them. I don't like them, but I'll eat them. Okay, so that's that's the joy of how can you hate omelets? Your parents didn't know how to cook as a kid, and so all they served you was way too dry eggs with some cheese in it and called it an omelet. And they served it to you very frequently, and then that's all that they served you for breakfast for a long period of time, and then you grew sick of them slowly over time. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I get, no, I know what you meant. I'm just saying, like, that's why... Why did you choose dark purple? Because it's easy. I shade with dark purple. It's like usually my go-to color. Um, it really just, it should actually depend on your lighting environment because a light, okay. It's gonna sound weird no matter how I say it. A cool colored light casts warm shadows. A warm colored light casts cool shadows. And that doesn't sound like it's true, but it is. And it makes things weird and great. And in all reality, if like this was in a pink room, I would actually maybe say, let's do um, like blue. Hold on. Maybe even green, green works. Green's fine. Not that much of a difference. Yeah. But but the point that I'm getting at here is that you can just push things with the most basic version of shading and you can make things look better even within like your own style, right? So this 100% was fine. Within the style of it being a simple illustration it's fine, but it could be pushed just a little bit farther within that same style to be a little bit stronger. And yeah, you can have it be like really light shading. It doesn't need to be hard at all. I would put it like here just to give it a little bit more contrast, but that's just me depending on the light environment, right? It's going to be contrasted extremely strongly if... Evie, stop choking yourself on your stupid fucking collar. You, oh my God, you're so dumb. Evie, stop choking yourself with your collar. Evie, Evie, stop. God damn it. Um, she's licking her neck and pulling on her collar, thus choking herself. Okay. So it, it, it the, the strength of your shadows is going to depend on your light environment. If we're going to say, like, let's make it similar to this, then there you go. But you get the gist between the two. Like, it's not that much of a difference, but it's enough to make it look contrasting in certain areas that it wasn't normally before. Any questions? Also, again, this is a really easy way to fucking shade. I promise you. 
I'll go over it one more time. In fact, you're going to take a layer. You're going to take a fill bucket. You're going to take a color. Okay. You're going to fill the entire layer. Okay. You're going to set that to multiply. Okay. You're also, if possible, going to clip it to the thing. You're going to take a tool. You're going to set it to an eraser, which if you didn't know, if you click right here, then this little box and similar little boxes like this down here, which is you can't see it, but it's the same over here. This makes things turn into an eraser. Then you erase. And wow, I've shaded. Wow. How do you add highlights to something already bright? Okay, well, the first answer to that is that that ice cream should not be white. Um, that's the big one. We were actually talking about it earlier with... Um, oh, well, I deleted it. Great. Uh, <laughs> yeah, clipping is just a mask. That's all it is. It's a clipping mask. That's all it is. It's a clipping mask set to multiply. Um, so... The, the reality is that no object should be white, right? And that basically means that that object in the world is literally as bright as the fucking sun because it means that it's a pure light source, okay? So if you want this ice cream, for example, to be white, to be bright, you shade it with, you know, brighter things. I would actually probably avoid trying to do white, in my opinion, just because this is really hard to look at and your brain can't really make it out. But I would just say go stronger on your midtones then, if that's the case. Okay. Uh, and fuck it, let's put in some reflective shading. Because we can. And we're sassy like that. Yeah. I mean, that's going to be your problem with things that are very, very bright, um, but uh, ice cream photo vanilla. It, it's one of those things where like with ice cream, for example, you just have to figure out what the actual colors are for the shadow, shadows, shadows, yeah, for the shadows. And then base that around your choices for highlights. Because, like, all of these shadows are, like, in the yellows and the oranges. And the highlights are in, like, bright white. And, like, you would say that vanilla is, like, white ice cream, right? When it's actually, like, kind of this color. So. The, the big thing that I like to do is to find out what my midtone is. Is to just do... Uh, Gaussian blur, blur the fuck out of it. That's your midtone. That color and that color are your midtones because it finds the average between all of them. There you go. Yeah, they're now my favorite cereal too. Yay! Any questions? This is also really helpful for human faces if you didn't know that. Mm -hmm. the the main one that i always see is that for blacks i use blues purples and reds and then for whites i like to use yellows light blues and greens but that of course also depends on your light environment so yellows being like this greens being like this and then white blue being like 
that for your whites, so to speak, and then for your quote unquote blacks, you have purple, you got blue, hold on, you got blue, you got red. So, doesn't look that different. There's a good difference between red and blue, but like, kind of just how I like to. How do we gosh and blur in pencil crayons? You don't. <laughs> you take it into your phone and you take the photo and then you blur the fuck out of it. Or, actually, another option would be. Find this color palette. Is it this one that I'm thinking of? Color palette generator from image. Yep, found it. <laughs> okay, so another option would be like take your phone, take any image. I don't fucking know. Um, whatever and then it's gonna pick the basic color palettes for you yeah <laughs> and then you could you just go from there yeah blue is black is uh, blue is so useful alternatively it dips yourself in water and goes to <laughs> yeah okay any other questions related to or not pertaining to dither cone? We got two more to go through. Yeah, it's my doodle fort tent. Also, hi, Apricot. How are you? Okay. Let me delete this. Is Hawk or Jordy here? Either one of you. Oh, hey! Hi, Core Hawk. You just got here. You want to go next, or Jordy, or who wants to go next? Hi. All right, fuck it. We're going to just we're just doing this. Um okay. So, real quick. I'm just going to do this cuz it is unimportant to the conversation that we are currently having. So, if you don't know what this is, this is takoyaki. Um and usually it is filled with red bean paste and usually it is deep fried. No, it's not takoyaki. It's, it's, uh, fuck. What is it? Kayaki, thank you. I, I like how I erased the word that it was and then had to guess what word it was. Okay. So, there are two kinds of taiyaki. Yes! There are two kinds. There are the kind that have the little imprint on them, and then there are the kind that have the full-on fledged, like, this is 100%, like, molded into it. Okay, so, back into the conversation of trying to be realistic within your own style, right? So, to try to get a crunchy texture, remember, we need to focus on our lighting first, 100%. And this kind of has this basic shadow here, and a lot of dots. So, first and foremost, I'm going to get rid of this, because we do not need it. This is excess detail, in the end, that you wind up not needing to convey that it is takoyaki, taiyaki, fucking hell. 
I'm gonna keep messing that up, aren't I? Okay. It is going to look pretty much the same with or without the tiny, tiny dots. Okay? So... Yeah, they have them with ice cream. I want to pull up the artist that I like a whole lot, right? If you notice, there's not a whole lot of texture to this until you get to the shading areas. And that's kind of just their style, but it still brings across the idea that it's like deep fried, right? Like you know what it is. As well as this part here is not the point of interest. The ice cream is obviously the point of interest, so there's more detail on that, okay? So the first thing is first is that we need to make this look like bread. So what if we simply threw down, nope, wrong one, some extra colors onto this with keeping in mind the brush that you have, or not the brush that has you, the style that you have. So currently it's a very goldfish color. What if we just went in and we're like this, and just like threw a whole bunch of colors together. One does not simply color into mortar. One does not simply. One does. Okay. So there's that, and I'm still trying to stick to what I'm kind of trying to define as like the style that you have at least. And let's grab, I don't know, let's grab this, see if that'll work. And yeah, like I'm not, I don't know exactly what brush I want to fucking use at all. Why would I? This is one of my first times drawing fucking Taiyaki. Like, why would I know what to use exactly to make this look good? Right? And again, I'm not doing anything like blending wise. I'm literally just trying to throw down some texture, just trying to go in and find a brush that works. Do I have a, what is this? That'll work. It's me. Okay. There's that. Yeah, that's on multiply, isn't it? Let's get you off of multiply. Please, thank you. Of course, I'm not going to color the whole thing because we will be here all day if I did that. So let's just keep moving on. And just giving it a little bit more neck texture. Okay. So then from there, I'm going to literally just use this occlusion line brush that I have, which literally just makes a line with occlusion. It's very helpful. Actually, it should start from the back. Yep, I do. Okay. Does that make sense why that works better than the original dots that we had? We didn't need all the texture. We didn't need all the things distracting from the original piece, which is what you wind up doing when it comes to food nine times out of 10, just because 
you're more focused on the fact that there's like these all these little flakes and things and the reality is is you need to worry more about the shading of it and that sucks in the end because shading is fucking hard right it sucks it sucks a lot but the reality is that it's something that you gotta think about it's the same as the orange that we talked about you need to be able to render out the orange itself before you add all the little pores to it because then you're just adding pores onto a tomato or an apple if you've shaded it incorrectly or something to that effect. And I'm just going to go in. I'm literally just adding little bits of texture to it. That's all this brush does. And you can kind of see how it adds to it. And I'm still working from far away because you're not looking at a piece like you're not looking at it like this. No one gives a fuck about it up this close, except for like other artists trying to figure out how you did the thing. Right. This is fine. This is 100 percent fine. trying to not blend. I'm trying so hard to not blend because I'm trying to just use brushes that don't use that much blending because the brushes are more important right now when it's dealing with this kind of style, but I'm not used to it. Ah! So freaking hard. Okay. So back to this. Go ahead and oop, wait. Let's just go ahead and that part off just because I want it to stand alone on its own. Okay, so this is pretty much what we had previously with dots. This is about what it was previously and this is this now with adding texture, adding a little bit of color variation between the yellows, the browns, the reds, and so on and so forth, and adding just a little bit of depth with no blending, no shading. I literally just went, here's an airbrush, make a mark. Any questions? I always feel bad for the last person in Doodle Forge, can I just say? Just because, like, they come in and they're like, oh man, I'm so excited. And the last Doodle Fort piece is always like, all right, what'd we learn? <laughs> Rip this to shreds. <laughs> and I don't mean it to come across like that at all. I never do. But that's always what it winds up being because I, at that point, I just wind up like repeating myself in a lot of cases. Um, but yeah, so I would say, Jordy, consider looking up an occlusion brush and see if you can find one for the program you use. That might help a lot when it comes to just like developing your, um, yeah, just like when it comes to like developing your style of shading, because I know you're having trouble with shading and you don't really have the tools for it, but it does help teach you. Well, yeah, art critique is absolutely brutal because you you have this thing that you made and you love and you care and you worked really hard on it and you hand it to someone to be like, this is bad. This is why it's bad, right? And the intent is not to be like, you are bad. It was just your execution was bad, was the actual. Does your program have layers, Jordy? Because I have a really easy way to make that an occlusion brush for you. Because normally, right, a spray paint can brush does like that, right? 
all an occlusion brush is, is half of it. So, in theory, right? Delete these real quick. Uh. So in theory, spray paint, right? And then you just, you, hey look, it's an occlusion brush. And then you lower the opacity on it and now it's a shadow. Wow. Shocking. Yeah, so it's just, it's just an option and it'd be something to think about playing with the multiply function, the clipping function if you have it, and just different colors other than black. So. Okay. Hi, Core. It's your first time here, right? Okay. So, how long were you here, is my first question, today. What was the first thing you heard, or have you been here the whole time? Secretly. End of cone. Okay. So a lot of texture, a lot of lighting. Okay. So then in that case, from what I said so far, which, hold on. Sorry, it looked like you drew this uh, traditionally and then scanned it in and redid it. Anyway, sorry. Um, if I were to say what do you think is wrong with this, what would you tell me? Specifically Core, not anybody else. From what I went ahead and told Jordy. And on the end tier of the ice cream cone. Shade work for sure. That would be the big one. Yeah. So this has no light source. This would be a situation of having no light source. Little peppery dots not needed. The dots, I think, are fine currently. They seem like they were, like, the last thing added and kind of just, like, I just got to add something to this. Um, whereas, like with Jordy's, it wound up being a centerpiece of showing the texture sort of thing, where you actually seem to try showing texture with, like, different light and color. So the biggest thing is you didn't pick any light source, okay? The the reality of it is that this would have to be <laughs> in an environment that like light does not exist because there's no shading to indicate any light source. So the first thing is first, you got to make Okay, well first we have to look at this pup. First we have to look at this pup real quick. Sorry, these mini tiny children, which are not pups, but they are great. Tiny babies. Tiny babies wanting milk. Look at these idiots. There's empty bottles down here. You can do it. God. You're such idiots. There's a bottle for everybody. Come on. They're just kids. <laughs> Get out of here. Okay. So, in that case, I would say consider a light source first. So let's do that. Really easy. Like we did before. Fill clip let's just say i don't know red let's do red uh delete this nope delete this and then clip it and there you go and then let's just very easily say the light source is i don't know like this okay so we now have some similar light source so it would be hitting these parts would hit this 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 let's just go in and reshade the lettuce because it'll be easier to do it that way 
Yep, do 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 do. Okay. And then of course, like none of this gets shown. So this is underneath that piece, that's underneath that piece, that piece shows to the dark side. This is also in the dark, this is also in the dark, this is in the dark, this, 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 this is facing the light. There you go. So now we have very basic light source, singular light source. This is like a point light source, main light source sort of thing that we've got going on. And then let's say, what if we just went... And again, not blending. Just trying to give it texture without blending. Wow, it's almost like there's actual kind of texture to it. Wowee! And then you can just like put in like other little pieces because other pieces stick out far enough into the light source. That's okay. There are other pieces that are 3D enough to be able to catch the light with all of their faces. <laughs> yeah, it's very much so like, wow, this man did not forget, forget, this man forgot to finish his taco, I see. Hmm. Um, I would also maybe say just a little bit. There's no hard shine on any of this meat or the lettuce here because this would probably just be getting bounce light at this point. However, the tomatoes and lettuce up here would absolutely be getting some light. And these aren't exact because we don't have a reference. We don't have something to go from. I would say getting a reference would probably be your first step that you need to consider legitimately because references, no matter what you think, are not cheating at all. They're not cheating. They, in fact, explain to you how you should draw the thing and then you draw the thing and it's fine. So. Any questions for this sort of in general core and if there's anything else that kind of bothers you about it. Your colors are fine. Your colors shouldn't be your worry right this second because you didn't wind up having a light source. Your colors are fine. It's not gonna matter. Um, if you think things are dull legitimately, just tonal correction, saturation. That's it. If you think they're dull, just up the saturation slightly. No one's gonna stop you. Don't overkill it, but like, you know, just do it. The tool's there for you. Um. So, okay, so core for the next noodle fort, since you weren't here for some of the other stuff. Um, I would say, I would recommend my phone going off, apparently, I would recommend finding a reference, trying to redraw this from that reference, at least within the confines of your ability, and picking a light source for it and just trying again. I think it's one of those things that once you know what Doodle Ford is looking for, it helps to go back and be like, okay, this is what they want. And feel free to tag me in it because I will look at it again and happily be like, you can do this, you can do that, here's this, here's that, that sort of thing. Okay? So, while I open up Strawpole, y'all think about what you fucking want to draw next month. And also, if you have any questions that either do not 
pertain to Doodle Fort or otherwise. Or they can't. It's whatever you want. Honestly, just got any questions? Anything. Uh, I'm making pork. Uh, 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 tonight. Smiley face. Okay. Yeah. No worries. We'll be happy to have you. Um, okay. So, real quick. Any questions? And what do you guys want to draw next month for August? Deer by Jam is not an answer for what you want to draw for August. I see we're already wanting to get spooky. Well, no, we would have to go get... We'd have to raid Spooky for it to get spooky. So, although Spooky might still be streaming. I don't know. Have you done still lifes before? Nope. Because chat has not wanted them and I have not found the need for them yet because a lot of people are still trying to figure out their own styles. Yep. Oh, shit. But I can put in, like, an idea for one. Anyway, give me more things to draw, y'all. What do you want to learn? What do you want to practice? What's hard? What sucks to draw? Hands and feet. Okay. What else? Give me like two or three more. Come on. This is where you pick what we're doing. Come on. Okay. And close. All right, cool. That is good. So just as a reminder, you can vote for all the things you want to draw. Try not to vote for everything. That doesn't exactly help. Uh, but there you go. Uh, let's see. Let's pick a date. Uh, today is the 17th, which means <laughs> uh, I'm going to be busy this day, this day, that day, Saturday. So this would be first Saturday of the month, the 7th. This should be VR chat. So let's do the 28th let's do the 28th 28th sounds good 28th let me go back to straw poll go ahead and vote pork belly is so freaking good uh looks like dynamic poses all right i will set up the prompt for that then and i will get it out to you guys either tonight or tomorrow and if I forget, feel free to at my ass and be like, dear, your stupid ADD got in the way and you forgot to do the thing. Can you do the thing for us, please? Because we all really want to draw. So, yeah. Um, we are going to go raid someone now. A lovely someone who is apparently playing games with chat. Yeah, you can have some. What do you think the thing do you need to do? The prompt for Doodle Fort next month. So, I'll be back on Monday, as usual. Like I said, I'm going to try to start at 9 a.m. instead of 8 a.m. from now on, because I'd like a little bit of extra sleep, and it's fine, and I have some things I need to do in the mornings. So there's that. <clears throat> I'll probably be back with... Fuck, I don't know. Maybe art. I have some commission stuff I need to finish. I have some commissions I need to do. So we might do that. If not, I might just, I don't know, play Jurassic Evolution or something. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Y'all go say hi to Tom. And, and y'all get your, I don't know, your, just ask Tom if he's winning. Just, I want, I just want a raid of are you winning, son? That's all I want. 
So, get the fuck out of here. Good goodbye. Good goodbye. Good goodbye. Good goodbye.